Garen. It's uh, doing well with Garen. So let's see uh, see what he's got for round number two. Mm -hmm. Caitlyn Quinn banned out again. There is whispers of the Urgot, every si single champion select as well. Beautiful 1v1 champion. Um, personally, satisfying to watch for me. I'm just a big Urgot fanboy. I like how you were able to fit beautiful uh, in with a sentence with Urgot. Uh, very well done, Krempo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he definitely is a monster in the one versus one, though. Uh, very scary. We talked about the long range harass. The one thing that makes me sad is that there's no forced clash in 1v1s, and that everybody's running these like these kind of yeah. hyper efficient summoners. But I feel like if you were forced it's... to use Snowball Flash, you could get a lot more interesting 1v1s. I, I I definitely love mobility, right? For me, the most exciting thing is when there are no matter what game mode it is, the more mobility, usually the more exciting the plays are, right? Just because your eyes are tracking more things. Yeah, and especially if you can then uh, predict the mobility of. Holy moly. All right, I'm probably going to be fired next time I don't get in the game. This is the second time I have failed you. I'm sorry. We clearly split up the duties. No. I'm, a, I'm on Ruse of Asteris. Kobe's job is to press one button and get into the game. <laughs> and he's failed twice now. Sorry, expect I looked up into the camera for a second and oh. I was caught. I, I get it. Okay, good. It. I'm out free. Good, good excuse. All right, well, they do it. They have him locked in. All right, so it will be the Lucian Rise. Make it going back to the Rise. Wants to get his victory on that first. Uh, and I do think, I do definitely think it's still viable, especially... Super good matchup for Sadie Carey. Exactly. Everybody's been saying it backstage uh, when they've been practicing, is like, if this AD carry trend continues, to rise is what you want to go for, yeah. honestly. And especially now against the even shorter range carry, I like that Uzi's spicing it up. Uh, despite he had the Varus last game, but maybe yeah. he just wants some ability to kind of get out of the rise's way, dodge another Q with a dash. I think it's a better pick uh, in that regard. However, shorter range, less harass. He gets caught easier. Yeah, I mean, it will be slightly more difficult for him to get control of the minion wave, but I still think he gets the job done with mm -hmm. Lucian. And so then you're just left with the, uh, you know, extra mobility. So uh, if you still can get the same job done at the beginning of the game, yeah. which is the point of AD carry, then I do like the small change that he's made. Yeah, so he trades the the fact that he can harass to the wave with Q and E. Um, just now, but it's at a much shorter range. He has to be careful, but if he gets caught, if he jukes a single Q from the rise, he can take the upper hand in the trade. Definitely true. Plus, Culling is such a huge weapon in this game. Uh, able to pressure that CS lead, also the long range harass. Since, I, uh, like you said, there's no flashes in this mode. Or, I mean, technically you could take flash. Uh, uh, yeah, but, but no, flash. nobody has taken Flash, so... The only player that maybe could take Flash is out of the tournament right now. Yeah, Mata. Mata. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually interesting, right? Because uh, 1v1 mode would be completely different if we tried to make them mirror Summoner's Rift uh, solo lanes and we're like, okay, you, it is one versus one mode, but you have to run Flash yeah. as a Summoner. So you have to run you know, offensive masteries, something like that. Uh, but it's a completely different game here because for this game, you have to be both striker and goalie. Like, yep. you can't just go offense. You, ha you have to be your own defense as well. Mm -hmm. But therein lies the beauty as well in these adaptations, the, the kind of resurgence of the resolve tree that every AD carry kind of figures out. Mm -hmm. AD carry runes and masteries have been pretty much figured out by Uzi by now. And again, similar things that we've been saying all week. Access to the mini wave early, get that first creep down, then uh, use AOE abilities to hopefully harass both the enemy champion and the minions, and generate push. Has expected to learn to last hit. Yeah, that's that's another thing, right? You need to nope. get you need to get some time on this uh, on this map to get used to the damage for melee uh, minions at least. Mm -hmm. Four out of six <laughs> passing. That that's your grading for it right there. Okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm counting the minions. <laughs> what grading would what, you what, use? What scale are you using for to come up with your grade, Krepo? <laughs> uh, counting. Counting. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uzi has yet to drop a CS. It's one, two, four. It's almost as if he plays 80k. Man, you should change the play-by-play, -play, dude. You got this down pat. Hey, man, when they're CSing <laughs> and we've analyzed these matches over... I've been here all week, man. I was hoping you would bring, like, some don't, new don't knowledge Don't give me the excuses, table. man. Oh, we're trying to turn the table here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I want my pen back. I threw it away <laughs> earlier and I was... All right. You sad. Pen case, uh, I really was hoping for him to try and get a, uh, more of those flexes through the minion waves again mm -hmm. um, last time, but... Since Uzi just puts out so much pressure early, it's really difficult to even get the time to do that. Against mages, it's so much easier. Yep. But Lucian is coming in. He'll punish you every time you step up to the minion wave. This is an all attack there as well. Peke, definitely feeling your nerves here on this rise. That's one benefit of AD carry champions as well. They just play with more base AD. It's much easier to last it here. Peke dropped two CS there again. 
Just slowly dwindling behind already. Um, fourth wave or something, he's down 10 CS in the gutter. Yeah. I mean, for, for people like just tuning in, we can go over again, you know, why the AD carries have been settled on kind of as the efficient uh, kind of way to uh, pass the victory, basically, mm -hmm. in the 1v1 matches. They have the extra sustain early uh, no. because they're going to be taking the Warlords. Uh, they have the ranged attacks that they can use for us uh, in addition to the spells. Uh, but also, it's just so much about the early wave control. Definitely so. And Uzi was trying to sneak a base there, hoping that Expecto would be afraid. But obviously, since there are no normal trinkets on this map, you just always run a sweeper so you can sweep the brush and reveal the silhouette. Then Uzi's base was stopped here. So that was good from Expecto. Yeah, I feel it's like the wave neutral as well. That is the main carryover from last year's All Stars, where at the beginning of the tournament, people were running like uh, all random trinkets. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the end, it distilled down to just the sweepers. But everybody started right off from the very beginning here this year uh, using those sweepers to see their opponents in the brush. Speke is out of mana. This could be a. I wonder if Uzi wants to pull this into the brush and freeze. Nah, he would oh. take too much damage, so yeah. he's just prepping the minions. He is really Look good at, at that. Guessing. Yeah, like. Uh, that that prepping prepping on this map, by the way, you have to get used to. But very uh, very well done here by Uzi. Yeah. Even though he's not able to get these range ones, the range ah. ones, since the range ones have such low health, or either it's they have super low health or the turrets do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. um, they're very difficult because if they get touched by pretty much anything, then the one turret shot does kill it. Yeah, that's an annoying caster minion that keeps switching targets when you don't want it to. <laughs> Betrayed by uh, the purple casters. I see you're wearing purple today, Kobe. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Is that an omen? No. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have no idea what clothes I even put on each day. We have a stylist. They just tell you to wear that, put it on. Uh huh. Go dance, monkey. I get and, to uh, here my, I am. I get to choose my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the advanced species. Oh man! To communicate. Actually, uh, you're, uh, never mind. <laughs> We're going down uh, the wrong path here. As Pekka has actually gained control, because this is a pretty interesting little uh -huh. uh, turning point. You know, trying to push. Uh, Uzi under his turret. We'll see if he's able to see us these ranged minions. Those are the tricky ones. And he saw us one immediately and then just yep. kind of hard shove the other two because those will, will get hit by minions. That's why he uses his Q right there. Get that one extra minion. Pekka right now in a much better spot than he was last game. Only trailing 5 CS and he is ramping upwards. Looking for those chains. Lux to transfer him. does get the extra damage on Uzi too. And more importantly, every time he does that, he blows up the wave. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's prep the all-in already right now. If we talk about the rise mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. People want to watch this rune under the health bar for XPK after the rise rework. Uh, he's charging up now. There you go. As soon as you get the full one, you get that boost of move speed plus the extra shield. And he's going to want to prep that before the one uh, all-in mm -hmm. does occur so he can try and use that for the extra health plus maneuver away from the loot. Yeah, definitely want to use that. And with the pressure, Specker denying more creeps under the turret. The viability of a CS victory is there. He has shown that he does uh -huh. more damage. He is ramping up on his all-in damage as well. And more importantly, he has his both summers available. So things looking on the up and up for Specker. And he's going to come away with the actual CS lead now. So definitely a big turning point for him. If he gets back in time, which he definitely should unless uh, he forgot something, uh, he'll be able to clean these ones up does purchase boots, by Ooh. the way. And speed is actually a rare purchase for a lot of people on this map, uh, but definitely helpful for the uh, to get in position for that all-in as well. Uzi may be nervous. We didn't see it, but his calling is on cooldown, so I think he double-tapped it while leveling up. Peke obviously doesn't Oh, uh, He used it at Peke. I remember him seeing, seeing him shoot it at Peke. Okay, then I'm just blind. Okay. <laughs> definitely not a fault when you're casting, but it's nope, up nope. soon enough. All right, he's... Prepping the fluxes. Uzi not stepping close. Ooh, anymore. that's good for Expect. A really good start here. Minions don't really get to him early. Oof. He's just trying to get Ooh. a summoner spell out of the way right now, by the way. Oh, that was really good sidestep there by Uzi. Not walking into the predict queue from Expect. So hard to play against. That alone can tilt the player, by the way. When you know somebody would normally step into a direction, eat your queue, but a greater player just stands still. I mean, the levels of mind games, uh, as you get to the higher levels, right, you expect them to be this good, but uh, if they're even better than that, they're going to not even move at all. And I don't know. With Uzi, it's incredibly difficult because he does change it up. And we may actually see Pekka shift gears to potentially <laughs> the first turret victory. <laughs> I don't know about that. Another culling. Another. Uh, Pekka basically hit in the same spot of that brush. The angle there not going to be helpful for Uzi and 
Peke taking over, representing for the mage players here, mm -hmm. and actually bowling the AD carry, putting that CS pressure on Uzi. Well, he has Realm Warp. We don't have the minimap, and due to technical difficulties of one of our casters, we are not in game, so we need to just track the. <laughs> <laughs> we have to check the rise in the top left to see if he Rune Warps uh, or Realm Warps rather to the middle of the lane. He's using it, so he's coming. Uh, look at that efficiency. <laughs> Maximize that speed. Is it worth a point for that distance? Uh, it w okay. He's just using this one. Uh, we want to set up the minion play later. He's using this one. He knows it'll come off of cooldown when he needs it for that uh -huh. uh, spectacular minion transfer. That would be actually sick because this is looking like a CS battle. Yeah. I don't know about that Q. Uh, what yeah. the explanation was there. Lag. Hmm. He's also, you know, we talked about the mind games of dodging skill shots, right? Uh, you throw a couple here and there, he's looking for a make your opponent think he's wild. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh, looking for a little bit of zoning here. He pushed, uh, he, he pulled the wave. Look at how the first melee creep is dying much faster on the blue side. It's because Xpeke just did that minor tweak on the minions, pulled him in the brush, made him focus the same target, and now he's going to proxy zone. Remember, if he does not auto attack, he will not get aggro from these ranged minions. Did see that a whole bunch during the lane swap days, mm -hmm. and still a, a lot of the times during you know bottom lane if you get uh, the proper recall off. But Pekka is still you know, going for the CS, keeping those up. So eventually it's going to get back towards Uzi. Yeah, once Uzi gets close, he can actually start challenging CS. Good trade by Xpeke here. Ooh. As well control as well. Once Uzi gets close to challenge CS, Xpeke immediately turns the tides and uses the minions in an aggressive manner. 82 CS to 68. Xpeke is going to do it. He's crushing it right now. The turret's even getting in danger. Just has to be careful. Culling is the only way out for Uzi. The people's champion here, Peke, he even gets the culling down there, only losing like 75 health in the exchange. Peke setting his focus on the minions. I think this is the first time the crowd in France is not going to hate a CS victory. 89 remain, the turret's low as well. Barcelona, France. Oh, the turret's gonna go down, he gets exhausted, he got summoners out. Barcelona, France, Barcelona, Spain, Kobe, Kobe. The turret's low, what's he going for? One more shot, turret dies! It's not a CS victory, so the crowd likes exactly. it. <laughs> Barcelona, I was France. trying to figure out where your France came from, and I was like, what? <laughs> Becca has got fans in all countries. Worldwide oh. icon. Yep. Yeah, he actually surprisingly did a lot of damage to that turret. That's bold, though. <laughs> he had all the control. If he miscalculates one auto attack there, <laughs> And that turret survives one more shot, he could die, but that was beautifully played from Xpeke. The moment he realized he was in control, yeah. he shifted the momentum and started just, like like you said, spell fluxing that wave and just yeah, AFK pushing with the rise. That's going to eat a ban in the next game. One to one. We come down to the last game in the best of three, Peke versus Uzi. Mm -hmm. One uh, mage victory, one AD carry victory. Uh, the tension is definitely building in the building. I think this is where you challenge Uzi to an Ari mirror match. Yeah, well, what is you could do that, Oriana definitely. Match? That's boring. I, I don't think that Uzi is going to deviate from AD carries, though, right? He has been the kind of stone, uh, stone cold killer, uh, not deviating at all, going for those uh, grindy victories. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually got bested here, so maybe he bans Rise. I, uh, we need to go back over what the other bans were, because you still have to ban Syndra. I feel like you still have to ban LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. I think... Rise is much more of a threat than probably even Syndra at this point because you, it's just a point and click snare is just so hard for AD carries to deal with. I think maybe a good Lucian can yeah. kind of play, but you do need a lot of macro dodge. I think that we have uh, come to the conclusion that Rise should be off the table, so it's just a matter of what else he's going to give up for it. Yeah, and in worst case, then he gives up the Kenu, which is kind of a, a low skill floor champion versus AD carry, so we need to see. There's only three bans for Uzi. <laughs> Alright, Caitlyn's off the board. Let's take a look at what... Uh-oh, technical difficulties again. Ah, uh, hate it when that happens. <laughs> Rise ban off the table, no surprise there. Mm -hmm. Taking their time right now. Bans came much quicker in the first game. Peke one game away from representing Team Ice in the finals of the 1v1 tournament, where there are 250 points at stake for the first place, 150 for the second. LeBlanc banned out, rise off the table, just like you were saying. 
I think this may end up with Xpeka playing Kennen, where the next ban is going to Syndra for Uzi. Cassiopeia, okay. Okay. So he does leave the Syndra up. Oh. Will Peke go with the Syndra? No. Um, dirty champion 1v1, but you gotta you gotta spike extra hard level six if if you're uh, Ilawi, because the tentacles give CS. AP Shaco is actually insane uh, right now. I'm not quite sure about this map, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely very strong in one versus one and in solo queue, especially on the enemy team. Yeah. Never on my team. But uh, typically, whatever they're hovering right now has not been the last choice. Oh, we're so just we're just going to have to wait and see. Just filling time. Yeah. Let's return to the France thing, because you mentioned France. And Wait, that's why I said, France? right before I said Barcelona. Friends. Oh, friends. My bad. OK. My bad, Kobe. I can't speak, OK? <laughs> Wait to rub it in right there. I was sweating. I was like, oh my god. Why is he? All right. No, oh, the Sindra mirror. Yes. <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad we settled that. I had to clear my name afterwards. Oh, can you uh, can you pick up enemy spheres? We will find out. We'll May find hopefully, out. they'll have a test of it uh, when they hit level two. Uh, you know, one of those gentlemen Inspire. gentlemen agreements. Uh, <laughs> or one of them starts Q, one of them starts uh, w. w, and then it feels like very slanted. Although like, W start is okay in his matchup, we saw it uh, being done by players because it just seems more mana efficient to push the wave. Uh, it does more damage than a level one Q. Yep. So a lot of people do start that. Uh, the difference isn't huge, but uh, definitely possible. Also, you can mess up CS with it. Yeah. So the uh, the CS battles are slightly more exciting in Syndra one versus one. Imagine if there's like both players are 94. They're approaching, they do perfect CS, and then they yoink away the cannon creep that they need or something. They each have the other ones they're <laughs> waiting like, for yeah. them to throw the last minute. They're as far away as they can from, uh, from the map. The victory comes down to who times the end of the cooldown better. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's any differences here. I expect it to be incredibly similar. Taking a look at Xpeke first. Uh, Magic Pen health, MR, and... Ability power, obviously. So he's playing just like the, the gener generic AP tank mid lane page. And on his mastery is 12 18 0, so no resolve. <laughs> we can look at Whew. Uzi. Uzi is running the resolve. He really likes the efficiency from the resolve tree. So Xpeke should be dealing slightly more damage, you know, with those 12 points in ferocity. Uzi should be kind of more sustained. Mm. And have That's the more thing. Health. The thing to me too is that Feast is also very good sustain, and you do get that mm -hmm. uh, in that first offensive tree. Ooh, and there's actually a big difference here. Um, we're looking at hybrid penetration runes from Uzi, running some lethality and magic pen, flat health, uh, more AP, and also on his loose, he's running 3.0 mana regen. So that means his glyphs are entirely based around mana region, so Uzi is playing the sustained 100 CS style, whereas Ekpeke, we're yeah. looking for the all-in. And you can see it in the early play style as well. Uh, Uzi was starting, Uzi did start Q, start spamming it on the ranged minions to get control of the wave. He's still playing this like an AD carry, right? Yep. Getting wave control first, then going for harass. Whereas Pekse, uh, Peke started with the W, uh, Uzi was able to dodge it, so he didn't land the first one, but went for harass over wave control. And this is the same thing, uh, as we see in a lot of mid lane matchups, so wherever you walk up for a CS, you can expect to get Q by Syndra. So I expect he's dodging a lot of these. He is used to playing versus Syndra, so that's in his advantage. Ooh, good side step by Uzi, aggressively stepping forward. Yeah, good predict on the auto, Q. though. There's a lot of minions on Xpeke here. Uzi is obviously doing really beneficial trades in the fact that he's hitting Xpeke and the minions at the same time. That side step was beautiful, though, on the W from Xpeke Syndra. Xpeke with a single minion lead at the moment as well, though. Sometimes when you're so caught up in pushing, efficiency goes out of the window. It's so important to keep that minion wave pressured. Also, health is almost more important than mana right now. Peke also has the mana lead. Mm -hmm. The problem is for Uzi is that he's he traded his glyphs for 3.0 mana regen for five seconds, where you could have had 12 magic resistance. That feels like a very poor trade. I mean, it's definitely going to hurt him in the actual trades of damage. And he's going to be the one first forced back to base because of it. Double Dorns, double Potions, something very often overlooked in the early levels as well, the value of Potions. All right, you can solve that creep. Yeah, you're just going to pull it. 
It's very really hard to judge uh, whether the melee minion is going to be finished off by the turret. Mm -hmm. It's about 60% almost. Yeah. And it needs to have to survive. That's why Uzi pulled it out. Use some mana, but immediately pops the relic. That's level four. All right, this one uh, is going to be for all of the marbles as well. Yep. Remember, once we get to level six, the potential of the unleashed power. Yeah, just keep looking at the spheres as well. Hitting the level six spike early is going to be important. Speke will likely have a mild experience advantage if the waves are neutral. The problem is that Uzi is pushing right now. I really do like that uh, it's going to be very skill intensive this last duel, right? Uh, it's going to be all about who hits more of the skill shots. And you generally want to start with the W for the slow, so it makes it much easier to land uh, each consecutive Q. But the stun does land for a good Thunderlord's trade by Peke. And I think he dodged the slow on the way out. Yeah, but on the back end, Uzi reacts pretty fierce as well. These guys Ooh. are really good at sidestepping each other's ease, but as they set up for a Q, there will always be the counter Q mid animation from Uzi. Yep. And now it's a race to level six. Because remember, ult ulti can come out of exhaust range, leaving only barrier as your defense. Peke also, uh, even with the boots, Uzi getting the better of the health trades here. Yes, because it doesn't matter for Uzi where Xpeke is moving. Uzi's if just waiting pacing. for Xpeke to walk up, go for the Q, and then mid-animation, he answers anyways, looking for the more efficient trades. Tanking a bit of the minions here. Group up as well. Uzi likely basing off of this. Has it enough uh, mana to finish off the range minions and is going to get a pretty good base here. See what the second purchase is. If he decides to go move speed as well, uh, you know, for dodging one of those crucial Ws. Surprise, expected did not go for a sweep stop there. Knowing he had, yeah, it's too late right now, expected. Knowing he had double relic available, if he got that stop, that could have been a really powerful game breaking move. He obviously did not have the oversight because he was so busy just trying to equalize, equalize out that wave. And look at this, Uzi's continued focus on the mana is there in the purchase with the Lost Chapter. This is a hugely efficient uh, mana purchase for him. Going to get a bunch Four men's move up. for the uh, level up. Yeah, so he's, he's just going to be spamming on the waves and counting on that, whereas Peke is going with the combat power level six duel. So the only way that works out in Peke's favor if he can get good trade and then zone Uzi off. Uzi keeps basing here. Hmm. Well, minion base reset because by the time he gets back, he'll be in a good spot. Good prep from XPK. Yeah. Preps one minion with auto, waits for the turret shot on the remaining one, and then fires everything off. The minion advantage there for Uzi is pretty significant, though, uh, because of that really quick shove. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really hard for XPK to generate any sense of denial. That's why he's going for the fast push. Don't want to freeze here because Syndra has really long range, can always get access to the creeps. Looking to generate push here. Maybe aim for a turret victory. Who knows? Doesn't get the range ones there, and Uzi is going to be able to pick up most of these. Increase the CS lead a tiny bit. Yeah, Peke. Uh, now it's dodgeball, Kobe. Losing a little bit. If you can catch a sphere, you can dodge a wrench. <laughs> well, that makes total sense. <laughs> In France. <laughs> In France. <laughs> Uzi also with the no magic mantle pickup. Uh -huh. While it's not quite as much magic resistant resistance, it's very close and yeah. it's gonna give him similar combat effectiveness. So with the extra damage from minions, that's that more than makes up for uh, the difference there. Oh, just really denying, good by Uzi. Denying just denying more minions. Yes. Could have gone oh. for a little Thunderlords cheeky tap there like Peke just did. Yeah, Peke shifting focus. He knows he's down on the minions, so. He is pretty low on mana as well. If he keeps going for CS, I think Xpeke is going for a push into base here. It almost has to be, because he knows he's going to lose the minion game. And he may actually just spec into like an elixir or something. Just yeah. all in, know that he has about 20 left. Immediate reaction by Uzi is the sweep, of course. He does not want to let Xpeke base, and he is actually yeah. going is he to gonna stop him if that he knows. Rush now? All right, he's going to go back, because you want to be on the maximum item efficiency as well for the last fight. He knows Peke is going back. Oh, cancels it. He's going to push one more wave. Yeah. Solidify that CS. He knows it's coming. He needs more, I guess, gold to yeah. just get the more. He knows it would this be is helpful to be able to check gold right now. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, gold helps buy items. Things brought to you by the Color Caster team. All right. We're coming down to the wire here as uh, the, the CS lead for Uzi is going to force a fight from Peke. Yeah. 
<laughs> they keep missing. Just one ride him. I mean, you need as much combat effectiveness as you can possibly scrounge together. You know that the window is only a couple more waves. I mean, expect is just, he, he went for the lost chapter instead of more damage. So maybe. Yeah, I think it's too late for that buy. If he gets a good trade, he wants to maybe get Uzi off the wave. Oh. Maybe Uzi proves to be the tanky. <laughs> I mean, it is impressive what Uzi is doing here, right? He's taking the mage uh, versus the... I mean, technically, I guess everyone's going to be like, yeah, but Peck is an AD carry most most mm -hmm. recently. But yeah, yeah. honestly, the Syndra mirror matchup, I thought that Uzi would continue to just use AD carries. I like that he's spicing it up a little bit here. But he's just always had control of this minion wave. Uzi just so smart when it comes to knowing when to prioritize minions instead of trades, and that's obviously what's been generating him these... Just moments of sheer pressure that he gets on the back of the implied minion win victory. Nine CS remain. Oh, here they go for it. Exhausts are Ooh, down. Bad barrier. Does get the stun and the ult pretty early. Still a barrier on the side of Uzi. Uzi's complete control. All he needs to do is get to the relic. Kaidex Peke. Peke wasted his barrier entirely, misreading the animation. Uzi looking to shift towards minions again. Nice dodge. Now Uzi's on the chase. Is he going to finish another CS victory here? Only four more left. Peck has got no options. No more dodgeball, just CS. Uzi in the brush, no sweep. Expect it gets hit. Ooh, that slides out. That's game over. Even if you land that, there's not enough follow-up damage. Barrier's still available. Uzi just flaunting with it. Three Peke going to go down fighting, though. He's going to charge him. Fight like a champ, Peke. Oh, Ooh. and Uzi's going Go for the Uzi right, gets, gets it. All right. All right, whether he's on an AD carry or a mage, he still has the calm style. Get CS pressure first, force your opponent to take a bad fight. And again, resolve defense. He, what he lacked in defensive uh, capabilities from his master, from his roots, he made up in masteries on side of Uzi.